was convinced to do this story this week about something that I was completely unaware of, off my radar screen completely and blissfully so, social media celebrities, stars, people with tens of thousands of followers because, well, they have so many followers. In the case of one such social media star, though, the plot unravels like a horror film. Here I thought all this time that these are true celebrities. But in the alternate universe of social media, it's people like Asina O'Neill, a pretty and perky 19-year-old Australian girl with a huge following and a knack for self-promotion. I had over 100,000 views on most of my videos on YouTube. In just a few years, Asina became a teen idol on social media, which led to modeling jobs and product endorsement. Then she went to L.A. on vacation. In L.A. and I was at a pinnacle of success. In reality, Asina spent her vacation mooching off friends. Met a guy, he dumped her. Suddenly she sees the light. Announcing to the world on social media that she's quitting social media because it's all fake. Including her photos, her tan, even her body which she starves to stay so thin. I'm the girl that had it all and I want to tell you that having it all on social media means absolutely nothing to your real life. And then that video got more than a million views, prompting this weepy reaction. There is so much more we could be doing than just editing ourselves and proving ourselves to others. Friends and other self-described social media influencers though think it's all a stunt. She thinks that she's doing this whole real thing on the internet but I, to me it's just as fake as a edited an image. Regardless, Asina has rebounded with millions of new views on her latest videos, those websites she's dropped. I'm keeping my Instagram and YouTube as little like symbols um, <laughs> that I did quit, if that makes sense. Like Actually, it doesn't, but none of this does to me. I mean, I, 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 it was a lesson for me to learn about this whole world of, of people who exist, exist just on this level. I have to say, I thought Asina was very, very clever. I mean this sincerely, at manipulating those websites. She's, she's good, she's talented, she really knows how to do it. I wasn't totally convinced that, she, that her lament wasn't in part real. Her friend said that it was because she had been dumped by the boyfriend and she was just really overwrought and very upset about that. But the idea that she became a star because of somebody hitting that like button over and over and over again. I, I, I guess I find it, and that other people would find that a fascinating phenomenon. Well, I, that, that's I, where I, we got I'm Justin gonna... Bieber from, from, yeah. from YouTube videos. I mean, there is, I think this is a problem that publishers and news organizations have, that they, they often spend their times, they think of the web, and then maybe they think of Twitter and <laughs> Facebook. For younger populations, it's Vine, it's Snapchat, it's Instagram, mm. it's other platforms that are um, more directly personal, where there are people who have you know, created giant businesses for themselves. You know, uh, a PewDiePie, the top star on YouTube, it's just a guy in Sweden who plays video games, made $12 million last year yeah. earlier off of that. There's a giant industry, mm. and there are all sorts of people in Los Angeles who are trying to co-opt it, and they're a corporation. You know, Disney's trying to you know get into this business. It's it's a very real phenomenon, and just because it doesn't surface in the media formats mm. that we may be familiar with, doesn't mean that it's not a big business and a big media outlet. It's big among young girls. Yeah, yeah. I have an 11-year-old daughter, Did and she, she know does, who this she was? didn't. I don't think she knows this, but she does watch these videos. Mm -hmm. There's a family, and they do they they teach you tutorials on how to do cute ponytails and hairstyles, and then some of the members of the family have their own videos where they give you cute tips. On how to, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of cuteness mm -hmm. and it's a lot of self teaching, and it's just these self made people. It's very low production values. They sit in front of the phone or they sit in front, you know, they, they, you don't even need a webcam anymore. You just hold your phone and they create these little personalities around themselves, and kids watch. You know, bef before the show today, Joanna and I were having mm -hmm. a discussion of the meaning of the word elderly. <laughs> um, Stop it. I have to say, this whole thing makes me feel elderly. Uh, you know, it just, this just isn't my world. I don't think I have anything I could even say about this that would, that would add w one moment. Well, I, I, let me add one thing, because those two girls that were twins were actually friends of hers that they, she stayed with when she was in L.A., that video that they spoke in, it went 18 minutes, and it was highly, highly edited. And I thought, wow, you know, you could have had a time to say something very direct and pert and right on the point, and instead it was this meandering. And does, do people sit there and watch the whole thing? I did, 
and I really felt like I was spinning afterwards. <laughs> I mean, this this makes me feel insanely elderly and again irritable as well. But <laughs> I, I, Crusty, think, I think I think I mean you'd like to think sometimes I think with new technologies we get caught up in this sort of tech utopianism that leads us to conclude that because a technology it has a democratizing form that the content that emerges from that form or thrives in it is somehow going to be more worthy on a, like a moral level uh, or a, a substantial yep. level. And it's not really. I mean, this is just sort of mass culture by other means. You know, she, I can't even remember her name. Asina. She, she's very cute. Yeah. There's always been a market for, you know, cute young women to be looked at in, you know, mass culture that is not mm -hmm. on the Internet. And now it's just migrated to this this other format. It, there's also sort of a narcissus effect yes. here, too, right? You know, I, I mean, I have a daughter who's about your daughter's age. And she has made videos and has an itch to post on YouTube. And when I've looked at the videos, there's not much more to them other than that, hey, it's me and this is my video, yeah. you know, and, and that's it. But, you know, kind of like other teens mm -hmm. stared at the mirror uh, 20 or 30 well, years ago, now they're doing it. I could have done it as a rant or rave, but I couldn't have explained it.